Welcome to the Writer's Life, a place where you get the sight, sound, smell, and taste of my particular writer's life, where you get the truth about my writer's life. Subscribe if you haven't already. Punch the like button. Tap the bell for notifications so you don't miss out on one single exciting video. I brought to you by Aquafina. No, actually it's not. I don't have any sponsors. Except for Paramedia. That doesn't count though, right? It's my own. Um, pure water, perfect taste. You sure it's pure? Oh, so I have this app now. Um, see, I'm not, since I had surgery, I'm on this health kick. You know, I'm watching everything that goes in into my body um, type thing. I don't know. It seems like the thing to do after they cut you open, right? Um, my, my oldest son and I last night were going around the house, like, checking shit. And uh, he was, like, yelling at me about certain things. And it was fun, actually. Um, but anyway, what it does is it's, a, it's an app. What's it called? Uh, shit. I can't... I can't think of what it's called. But I'll, if I don't remember now, I'll, I'll mention it next time. But you scan these barcodes... And the product will come up, and it will tell you if it has hazardous material in it. Because remember how I was saying um, a lot of the a lot of the ingredients that we have in our foods and drinks here in the good old U.S. of A. are illegal overseas. And uh, for instance, for example, for example. Um, I'm a big um, cheese it guy. Cheese it's. Who doesn't like cheese it's? And uh, I put that through the ringer, you know, checked the barcode and all that. And it came up and it was like hazardous. I was like, holy fuck. So I had a half a box left and you know what I did? I threw them out. Mm hmm. I figure it was the nastiest, like, you know, made at a chemical company near you that spits out toxic waste sounding chemical like tetrahydrochloric um, burn your ass is thing and I was like I don't want that in my body anymore no matter how good cheese it's are so I threw it out threw them out so we were checking all this stuff and I have uh... now listen I love Italian food like Real Italian food from, you know, the Italian food they serve in Italy, which explains a lot of the reason I go there a lot. A lot of the reason I go there a lot. Um, that was a Tim Waltz statement. All right, I'm not getting political today. Um, but anyway, I, I do have a jar of Prego sauce hanging on. All right, all right, I'll admit it. Um, it's just for in case of emergency. All right, I, I have nothing in the house to put on my pasta today, and I don't feel like just doing butter and cheese or oil. Okay, so I did. And I'm like, oh, watch this one. It's going to be, like, terrible, right? And it said the product was excellent, that the ingredients were excellent. So now I don't feel so badly about having keeping a jar of Prego spaghetti sauce, I guess it is, um, on hand. Now, keep in mind, they don't really have spaghetti sauce in Italy. I mean, they do. You know, you can make your own. Um, they just have tomato sauce. Um, you know, you can have a pasta semplice or a, um, a pasta bolognese, which is with meat. Tomato sauce and meat. Um, but, I mean, you can make your own sauce. You can just take tomatoes, you know, a tomato base, and you can add basil leaves to it and olive oil, salt and pepper, um, some Parmesan cheese, stuff like that. And then, you, then you're starting to ha make your own, you know, a little sugar maybe, a little touch. And then you're starting to make your own spaghetti sauce, pasta sauce, whatever. Um, which I love to do when I'm there. I cook 90% of the time. On my, or else I'd be broke, right? Um, so... I don't know why I'm talking about this. This is not a travel channel. It is sometimes, though.
if you notice that light is beaming through my tall friend my friend being this old oak because I'll give you an idea where I am because um, it's fall now and in fall the leaves fall off the trees mm -hmm. that's what happens in upstate New York Speaking of Italy, did you know you really don't get a fall there, like in Tuscany? Um, you don't really get, you, despite all the forests and all that sort of stuff, you don't really get brilliant colors. I don't know why that is. I think it's got to be because of the moderate temperatures. But don't forget, in Tuscany, even though you think of Tuscany as hills and sweaters and uh, rain, cool temperatures, stuff like that, um, they have palm, palm trees. Um, it's very close to the ocean. Pisa is like right on the ocean. Florence is very close to Pisa. Old adage about uh, how the Florentines back like in the Renaissance era, they would uh, they'd take a wee wee in the <laughs> in the Arno because it flows directly to Pisa. Not it. I find that funny, but I don't know. Whatever. That's my sense of humor. Um. All right. So what was I talking about? Um. What was I thinking of talking about? Sometimes I don't think of anything. I just come on and ramble a little bit, and it ends up being all right. Um, oh, before I forget, uh, the sixth, the sixth, as in six, um, Steve Jobs' novel is out today, The Blackmailer. It's based on a road trip I took to New Hampshire like three years ago, and I wrote it three years ago, and I finally got it out. Um, it's a really cool book. It's fun as fuck. Um, it's just gonna be one of these quick reads. You're just gonna um, you're gonna laugh sometimes, and you're gonna be like, it's pulse pounding, heart stopping, and all that sort of stuff. So I hope you pick it up. Um, I'm doing it. I, it's one of those limited time, low price things for the weekend. So to be perfectly brutally honest, so that I get on the lists. And then when I'm on the list, I raise the price. I normalize the price and uh, take advantage of that free advertising and hopefully make a couple bucks, right? Um, which leads me to, that's the segue to, how do I launch a book? Um, I'm sure I've talked, I've talked, I know I've spoken about this before several times, but again, just for anybody who hasn't heard it, here's my method. Um, I make sure the book is available in all formats, usually. Sometimes I, I, I'll launch a book, just ebook first, and then within the week, the audio and, and the paper will come. Uh, this book I launched in all formats, although I do believe the paperback is still in review, so that might take a day. Uh, but don't worry if, if you're one of the, I have to read paper. Um, okay, it's coming, like in a day or so, and those paperbacks are for you especially for you um, so but anyway I put it in to KDP first for the three-month cycle and that allows me to take advantage of like the Kindle countdown deal and the free days and stuff like that and then in usually I will pull it from KDP when that three-month thing is over and go wide as fuck with it including like my new pay hip stores and what is going to be my new Shopify store. I'm currently propagating the Shopify store. I, I joined up, I think I got, it's like 39 bucks a month, but I got a month free, so I don't start paying until next month, which gives me a lot of time to fill it up and to create my store. Um, but you could do different things now. I'm starting to, to discover, like look in the future, or at least in 20, early 2025, like I might not, I might decide to, say not launch my book on Amazon first I might say this book is only available on Shopify first um, and I think that'd be a good way to like get people to go to my Shopify store um, and why do I want to do that first of all you save money um, because in that little area where it says charge tax with this I, I click it off you're not gonna get charged tax so that saves you money right there and it's a direct sale um, you're dealing with me direct 
Um, there's no middle person. You know, I make more money. You're probably more satisfied. Um, you're not. You're spending less money. For, that'll make you more satisfied, and you're getting the same great product. See, everybody ha is happy. Um, but I, it, I could tell. Well, first of all, selling direct. This will probably be the title of this. Selling direct is absolutely the future of of publishing. Um, it, even though we're still going to use Amazon, we're still going to use Draft to Digital, we're still going to use Google Partners, Kobo, um, all those different aggregate sellers. The real future lies in in a more secure future, and the secure future means you won't be shut down by any one of these platforms, and that means selling direct to your readers. The problem is, all you guys have accounts with like Amazon, and you're just so used to like, well, he, Vince is selling a new book on Amazon, I'll just go over there and my credit card is with them and click one click and it's done. And I understand that, I'm the same way. I have never bought a book direct from an author yet. I will, but I, I haven't done it yet because I'm so used to buying from Amazon, right? I mean, that's, that's the way I'm trained. Uh, that's where my credit card is. You know, that's what we do. Um, but if I start offering up books that are exclusive to Shopify or exclusive to pay him, even exclusive to my website, um, then you will be like, well, I want Finn's new book, so I have no choice but to go there. And maybe you'll set up an account with them or you don't even have to set up an account. You just, you know, Put your credit card info in there and boom 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 i mean you know you got to do that when you get takeout sometimes or whatever right but i don't know well let's see how it goes i i, I would imagine that by this time next year i'm selling probably like right now like on pay hip i'm making just like soda money beer money in my case um but I expect all that to change, especially once my Shopify store is up, because it's a much more professional presentation, and they have like little things to help you promote your books and stuff like that. So I would not doubt that I'm making as much or more from Shopify as I am from Amazon right now. It'll certainly be congruent with my draft to digital royalties, I think. And that would be great, you know, because what did Dean Wesley Smith say? Don't count on selling like a thousand copies at one store, any one store, any one platform. Count on selling like 10 copies at like 100 stores. You know, and eat, you know, obviously Draft to Digital has like 50 stores, Amazon has like 20 countries. You know, so all those count as little stores and stuff like that. But, um, and you take all those income streams and you just kind of add them all together at the end of the month. And you should, this is what you're going for. This is what you're going for. You're going, every month you should be looking to make the average, the average genre fiction um, advance. And I think the average advance these days is three to $5,000. That's what your goal is. That's what you're going for. Um, and these poor bastards who don't know how to take control of their career and always like, uh, woe is me, I can't make it, I have to do other, you know, uh, you know, they're still trying to sell exclusively traditional to these, to these podunk fucking publishers who give them three grand and then that's it, that's all they're ever going to get. And they've given up their IP, they've given up their intellectual property for these assholes. And, uh. You know, I don't know. I sometimes I feel like I'm blacklisted a little bit because I've called them out on their game. You know, and they don't care if your book sells because at the end of the, at, if your book doesn't sell, well, first of all, if your book sells, good, they make a profit. If your book doesn't sell, it doesn't matter because their accountant writes it off as a loss, so it goes against their taxes. So it's a win-win for them. That's why they don't give you your your rights back, or why they're you know they they give you a big problem with it. And they also have a sneaky thing they do when they do give you your rights back. They still sell versions of your book 
and they don't pay you for it. They're all shysters, believe me. You know, they're not they're not into this to be nice and because they're into literature or any of that stuff. They're into it to make a fucking buck. That's it. And I've called them out on it. So, you know, so anyway, you gotta take control of your own career. You gotta take you, you gotta be your own person and you can't you know you can't be beholden to these 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 crooks who want to steal your intellectual property. Are you gonna build a building in Manhattan and just give it away? For like nothing? No. You're gonna keep it. And license out every little space. So alright, I'll can be going on that. Um Anyway, so that's how I launch a book. You know, it looks kind of, you know, it looks it looks like oh look at Vin, he's selling a book for nine, you know, for ninety nine cents when all the others are like five ninety nine and above. Um, yeah, I I do that for three days, but then it goes to five ninety nine or whatever. Um, it's just a good, solid, fast way to get on the hot new bestseller list and the bestseller list, um, so that you're seen, so that you're brilliant book cover is seen and I will say this the cover for um, the blackmailer is one of my best get covers did it out of Kiev and uh, it's a brilliant cover and it's like based on Thelma and Louise like Moonlight's Mustang is going off a cliff it's really good it's effective um, they did a great job all right so that's all I got for you today um, today is Thursday hmm. This week flew by. Where is flying by? Right? I'm so screwed up this week. I, I, I thought I had a doctor's appointment yesterday morning. So, you know, I got up at like 6. Got dressed. Drove over across the river to Troy. You know, all the... Fought, fought the, the battle of rush hour traffic. I don't know how people do that every day, rush hour traffic. I don't know. I used to do it 25 years ago before I started doing this full time. And, oh my God. I don't know. I don't know how, like, there aren't heart attacks happening every two minutes. People are nasty out there in the morning. Anyway, I show up for the doctor's appointment and they're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, Vince Sander here for, you know, Dr. Doolittle or whoever. And they're like, He's not even here today. I'm like, what? It's on my calendar, October 2nd. And they're like, uh, no, you're not supposed to be here until December 2nd. And then I made it funny, and I said, should I wait? <laughs> you had to be there. And anyway, they're like, no. So I said, well, Merry Christmas. See you in two months. I got to keep better. This is the thing about not being married or living with a significant other. You, you do goofy shit like that because you kind of leave that stuff up to your significant other. Oh, you have a doctor's appointment tomorrow or you don't and you don't have to think about it. So, anyway. All right. Uh, so, again, the embalm... No, the embalmer. The Blackmailer is out. It's the new Steve Jobs PI thriller. It's great. You're going to love it. Um, in about a week to 10 days, um, the long novella, I call it a long novella because it's 100 pages, Tarantulas at 30,000 feet, which is a hoot, will also be out. Um, I should get the artwork on that in a day or two, so I'll put that up on social media, you can check it out. Um, all these books are just, if you want to escape and just like forget about, you know, the state of everything, if you don't want to think about the election and stuff like that, pick these books up. You won't regret it. And don't forget to read American Crime Story, too. You're going to love that. All right. Enough shilling. No more shilling. It's enough. All right. I will talk to you guys tomorrow or over the weekend. And don't forget. Ciao, ciao.